Do you sleep alone? Are you constantly rushing back and forth to the bathroom at night? Do you wake up fatigued with morning headaches? And you've tried all the trackers in the world that these random YouTubers have told you about, but you still can't figure out what's wrong. Well, my friends, the problem may be sleep apnea, but you're never gonna fully know unless you test. What's up, friends, and welcome back to the channel. So you may recall, about a year ago, I talked about Wesper, the first of its kind smart patches designed to be worn on your body while you sleep. Now, at the time, these were single-use patches that had a lot of potential and some really killer graphics, but couldn't make any medical claims about your sleep data because, well, the FDA. But a hell of a lot can change in a year. And so in addition to now coming with a charging dock and a pulse ox device, these patches also now include a little seal of approval from the FDA, meaning you can actually use them to find out if you have sleep apnea, which is what I did. And so in this video, I'm gonna share how all of this works from the testing to the diagnosis and everything in between. We'll also take a look at who this is for and then why you might wanna test because undiagnosed sleep apnea is way more common than you would think. It's kind of crazy. And then finally, we'll wrap things up by talking treatment plans and what you can expect from Wesper after you get a diagnosis. So that being said, let's kick things off with a quick breakdown of how this new sleep test works and who it's designed for, because there is a shocking number of people walking around with undiagnosed sleep apnea. Something like 30 million Americans have it, but only 20% have actually been diagnosed, which is a pretty big gap and an even bigger concern given all the health ramifications that can go along with it. The severest ones being diabetes, heart attacks, and strokes, which in hindsight is a really grim way to start a review. And so I'm sorry for that. But I'm also just not about skirting past the severity of this issue. It's a big fucking deal that affects so many people, the majority of whom don't even know they have it. And that's partly because it's just such an incredibly difficult disorder to diagnose. Even the most common signs like excessive snoring or shortness of breath, they aren't necessarily easy to spot without a partner and can therefore go undetected for years. Now add to that a string of other seemingly unrelated symptoms like hypertension or chronic morning headaches, even frequent trips to the bathroom at night. All these things can actually be signs of sleep apnea, but are often misdiagnosed and then mistreated as something else entirely. So just identifying the problem is half the battle. And then the other half is, well, getting the actual diagnosis itself. Because the old way of testing, it kinda sucks. You have to spend the entire night in a hospital hooked up to a bunch of wires and machines with all sorts of weird sounds and lightings and still attempt to sleep normally even though you know a complete stranger is watching your every move in another room. Plus it can take forever to get these things scheduled, add in some COVID stuff to the mix, and it's no wonder many people just don't bother getting tested for sleep apnea. And so that's kind of the fundamental problem companies like Wesper have been trying to solve to actually make sleep apnea testing easier and more affordable so that 80% of this undiagnosed group finally gets accounted for. Which brings us to the new Wesper kit. And well, it's quite a bit different from the one I tried last year. So for one, the patches, they're now rechargeable. So inside the box, you'll find this charging dock and cable and really all the sticky adhesives you could ever ask for in life. This time around, you'll also get a pulse oximeter device. So this is gonna wrap around your finger and measure your heart rate and blood oxygen levels. And before we jump ahead, I just wanna clarify one thing, that the pulse ox device, it's only gonna come 
with their sleep study program, which is separate from their wellness program. And so if you go with the wellness route, you will still get the patches and you'll get all the sleep data and all those reports, but you're not gonna get a pulse ox and you're not gonna get a medical diagnosis. That being said, these wireless patches do work exactly the same as before in that they're designed to be worn on the abdomen and the upper chest to track your different movement patterns while you sleep. And even though you gotta say, these are kind of weird places to stick things on your body at night, the patches, they are surprisingly comfortable and discreet to wear. So there's that. And then for setup, right before bed, you'll just open up the West wrap to connect all these things, fill out your sleep journal, You'll enable your microphone access to check for snoring. And then all you have to do from there is click start night and that's it. So Westboro does recommend doing at least five sessions before the evaluation, but you're still gonna be able to access all your sleep reports and this beautiful data in the app ahead of that. Just uh, don't do what I did and try to self-diagnose because you saw a couple of wonky stats one night. I learned the hard way that context, it really is everything guys. And so you might be totally wrong, which I was. So leave it up to the experts to do what they do best. Unless of course you're a legit sleep physician and by all means go ham, but that's off the record. So getting that little PSA out of the way, let's move on to the sleep report itself and what you can expect in terms of your data, because it's a lot. And to start, well, these sleep reports now include more metrics and I think even better visuals than before. And so this is gonna include things like all your sleep stages along with a couple of stats I have never even seen before, let alone measured with a sleep tracker. AHI, ODI, REI, not the sporting goods store, but the reason you probably haven't heard of these things is because they're just not typical consumer terms like REM and DEEP and HRV, but they are fundamental for a sleep apnea diagnosis, which is why you're gonna see them here or if you've ever done a medical grade sleep test. So what do these terms mean and how can they determine if you actually have sleep apnea? And since I am not at all qualified to answer that, this is uh, kind of where the experts come in. The first metric I'd like to uh, go over is called an AHI. That's an apnea hypopnea um, index. And that is the average number of apneas and hypopneas you have per hour. Um, in order to qualify for sleep apnea, obstructive sleep apnea, you need at least a five. And that's the very starting point. And so with an AHI of five or higher, you're likely dealing with a diagnosis. But if you look at my chart, you'll actually see I had a couple of these hypapneas or smaller breathing events in the early part of the night, which is partly why I was concerned I might have sleep apnea. But as it turns out, these sporadic one-offs can actually be very common, even among the healthiest of sleepers, of which I am not, but I try. But they tend to show up the most during one of your sleep stage transitions, because really that is the time in which our muscles are the most relaxed. I mean, they even become partly paralyzed during REM to prevent you from acting out your dreams, which I think is the coolest thing ever. But if the muscles around the airways, they start to relax too much, that's kind of when you start to run into problems. And so this ranges from more of the mild blips, kind of like the ones I had, to then obviously more severe breathing events that can really affect the quality of your sleep throughout the night. And so the AHI score is certainly one way to check for this, but then the other thing that they're looking at here is SpO2 or your oxygen saturation levels, which is kind of the bread and butter of what the pulse ox does. Your oxygen saturation in your blood should stay around 94 to 100% at any given time. That's healthy. But people with sleep apnea, when they stop breathing, their oxygen will drop. Um, and, you know, if we see somebody's oxygen drop below 90%, that's usually a pretty good indicator that they're having a, an apnea or a hypopnea. Now, there's one more metric I want to cover here, 
And that is CAI, or the Central Apnea Index. And the reason it's so important is because, well, it can kind of tell us a little bit more about the type of sleep apnea a person might have. Because there's two different types of sleep apnea. There's obstructive sleep apnea, which is the most common, about 20% of the population has. That's when you're, you have a blockage in your upper airway. The other kind is called central sleep apnea. That's a little bit more rare. Um, it doesn't mean that there's a blockage in your upper airway. You still have the ability to get air into your lungs. Generally, it's more neurological where your brain is, is not telling your lungs to breathe properly. So you might just stop breathing and it has nothing to do with your upper airway. And so for central, the CAI has to be a fiber higher just like it is with AHI for obstructive. Now, in some cases, people can have both, but it's rare. And then in other cases, people only have sleep apnea in certain sleeping positions. It's called positional sleep apnea, which is not at all creative, but it's why the patches are tracking your movement to kind of detect for that. So needless to say, sleep apnea, it's pretty complex. There are multiple types and varying degrees of severity for each, making it quite the difficult disorder to not only diagnose, but then even harder to treat. So for instance, somebody with very, very mild sleep apnea um, is going to have a lot more treatment options available to them. And they're especially going to have more conservative treatment options that don't necessarily require a, a prescription. So these might be things like positional therapy, uh, mouth tape, pillows, things like that. Um, whereas somebody with severe sleep apnea is likely going to need a, a little bit more intensive therapy. And this might be with something like a CPAP, for instance, which is a machine that helps you breathe at night or an oral appliance, or, you know, for some of the more extreme cases, it may be surgery. Now that can be a lot to navigate on your own especially when it comes to all the different types of medical devices. There's CPAPs and BiPAPs and APAPs. It's a lot of PAPs. But part of what makes Westboro as a company so unique is that they offer services that extend beyond just your diagnosis, including things like prescriptions. They even offer tech support on things like setting up your CPAP. In my opinion, this kind of service, this level of service, it's invaluable because it's often in the transition from diagnosis to treatment that a lot of people can get lost or just totally overwhelmed, maybe even give up because there's just so many freaking options. So that's the gap that Wesper's trying to bridge. And I've got to say, they have really come a long way. I mean, even in just the last year to try and make that happen. Which brings us to kind of the final point, price. The good news is that they do take insurance for their sleep study program. So essentially the whole test could maybe cost you little to nothing, depending on your situation. But even without insurance, it is still less than the cost of most sleep trackers these days. You'll get the patches, the pulse ox, two months of testing, and a diagnosis. The physician consult for a prescription, I think that is separate. And I'm not entirely sure how much that costs, if anything, because I didn't ask and that was dumb. But in any event, I still think that it is well worth the money for everything that you're getting, including the freedom to do it in your own damn bed. And so I absolutely encourage you guys to check out this service if you're dealing with apnea symptoms or maybe your partner is or even if you just know that something's off with your sleep but you can't really pinpoint what's wrong it's worth taking the test because at the end of the day it's so much better to be informed than it is to be ignorant on these things especially when it comes to your sleep and your long-term health and so i will make sure to include the links to Westboro and a bunch of other resources for you guys in the show notes below. I hope you found this helpful. And most importantly, I hope this just gets a new dialogue going or gets you to think maybe a little bit differently about sleep apnea. The answer 
to how do we solve this issue is we all just have to get better informed. It's absolutely 100% not okay that this is just a medical condition and therefore we shouldn't talk about it. I am talking about it. I hope you guys start talking about it. Anyway, I'm gonna get off my little high horse rant here and just say thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video useful or helpful, please leave a comment below. And I cannot wait to catch you guys on the next one.